<laughs> Welcome to the first ever edition of Kara and Marcus's backpacking ideas and things. Kara and I go in the backcountry quite a bit, but the thing is we don't often go in the backcountry for weeks at a time. I feel like we are pretty committed to the weekend warrior lifestyle. What you're looking at in front of us is like a glimpse into what we've been taking essentially the last couple of weeks. This isn't what we always take. It always is constantly evolving and you change it up so you're not having the same things over and over again. So this is like a glimpse into like what we've been having recently. With the frequency that we do trips, do weekend trips, the cost would be too extreme to be able to have like quote unquote backpacking food every weekend. Oh yeah. That would just, it would be too much. Yeah. And this is something that Kara's definitely opened my eyes to. Because I'm gonna backpack for quite a while. Too, you like fall into the trap. You're like, okay, I'm going backpacking. I need backpacking food. Like, I need a mountain house. I need a freeze dried meal. I need to have like protein bars. I need really high calorie, low weight items. This stuff is great. It's super lightweight, high calorie for the weight, but it's super expensive. These things are anywhere to eight to fifteen dollars a meal. That adds up. When like, there's two of you. Oh yeah. I mean, I think that's what a lot of people think about. Like backpacking dinner, you're gonna have some freeze dried meal. But you've come up with other ideas. What are the things that you do for dinners rather than, you always come up with the dinners, I don't come up with anything. If, I, if Kara, it wasn't for Kara, I would forget to bring food most of the time. So, dinners. What? One of the main bases to our dinners that I never even had heard of before. What is couscous? Couscous is tiny little pieces of pasta. It kind of looks like a grain, but it's literally just tiny pieces of pasta. That all you do is boil water, pour in the couscous, put a lid on it, turn off the stove, and literally just let it sit for five minutes and take off the lid, and it's rehydrated all of the pasta. The ratio of couscous to water is one part couscous, two parts water. Usually we'll bring a <laughs> cup of couscous for the two of us, We'll throw in some bouillon cubes, so usually just chicken bouillon cubes, chopped almonds, so it's got some extra fat, it's got some extra protein, it's got some extra fiber. But there's been times where you've like packed in like onions and peppers and other seasonings, saute that up first, then yeah. do the couscous. Yeah. And so like there's a lot of options. You can go lightweight, like straight, just couscous. Usually when we do the couscous dinner, it's with the hopes that we're going to a mountain lake where hopefully we are gonna catch a fish. Or if it's hunting season, shoot a grouse. Throwing a grouse in there is also super good. Yeah. I feel like couscous is a solid base. There's so many things you can do with it. Couscous is our go-to quickest comparison to a mountain house. Pour in boiling water, you're, you're done. done. You're done before a mountain house is done. Oh yeah, for sure. It's so. literally five minutes. A compromise between doing a whole meal replacement versus literally only eating pasta couscous. Yeah would be like a lot of the pouches that exist, whether they're pastas or rices or a combination. And these, again, are significantly cheaper yes. than a yeah. full meal, because it's not a full meal, like it is just a carb side. And the other thing too is like, a lot of times I have jerky and you like, you supplement, here's your protein, it's dried meat. Yeah, you can have rehydrated meat in your mountain house, but like, okay, yeah. I have a whole pack of jerky. You can bring in other stuff. Yeah. It doesn't all have to be in a bag all together. Like you can get your nutrients from multiple places. It doesn't have to be in one meal. Yeah, and from a nutritional standpoint, nutrients are absorbed throughout the day. You don't have to have your full suite of carbs, fats, protein all in one meal. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can expand over the course of the day. But I, yeah, I think the main point we're trying to make, I think people overthink it. Know that you don't have to spend a ton of money on it, if that's like a limiting factor. It's not gonna be like the best weight to calorie ratio out there, but it's gonna be fine. Like, yeah. So breakfast. I feel like the old standby, classic. People, ever, everyone does oatmeal. Definitely packets of oatmeal. Packets. And you bring in your one, maybe two, maybe if you're a big boy, you bring in four packets, which is not unreasonable because those packets are tiny. Yeah. They're also stupid expensive compared to just buying in bulk oats. Right, although oatmeal is pretty cheap as is, but, you, but is cheap, it's even cheaper if you do it yourself. But it's even cheaper if you do yeah. it yourself. And all the cents, all the dollars, all the pennies, they all add up 
This is true. And generally what I'll do is I will get in rolled oats. I won't get the instant oats. I'll get ones that have, they're just rolled oats or thick cut oats. They have more heft, more chew. So they're gonna stick with you longer too. They're gonna stick in your stomach longer. They're gonna nourish you for a longer period of time because it'll take you, your body a little bit longer to break down. And so it'll be like a longer lasting fuel. You take these oats and then you toast them in a pan. Before, before the trip. Before the trip. Yeah. So it, there's a step of preparation, but it's, it's worthy, like it's good. It tastes yeah. way better. Usually I toast some walnuts. And so I have toasted oats, I have toasted walnuts, and then you throw in brown sugar. And then that's literally your oatmeal pouch. Yeah. And then you just throw that in water. Well, there's the a lot of different variations you can do. You can buy dried fruit, you can throw in dried cherries, you can throw in dried yeah. cranberries, you can throw in dried blueberries, throw in dried strawberries, dried coconut. You can have anything. And then you can throw in whatever type of sweetener or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. You can throw in powdered milk if you want to have it a little bit creamy. That being said, I started to find alternatives because I was so sick of oatmeal, so a lot of times I'd pack in either just straight granola or cereal and powdered milk. And that's super easy, super quick. It's a way to mix it up. Like if you don't want to do oatmeal for every breakfast, you can mix it up. There's a lot of different things you can do. I've also gone through phases of literally just eating like a granola bar for breakfast. and. It all depends on what you're doing and how much energy you're spending too. Because yeah. if you're eating breakfast before hunting, you have to eat food. Because otherwise you're gonna feel like shit. you're not gonna be able to concentrate, you're not gonna be able to focus. I've done that way too many and times. And then it's like not eating breakfast and then you, you don't feel good. Like you have to And you're not to making clear decisions. you're not making good decisions either. The bunny outside. Kill it. It looks yummy. The not, the one nice thing with your granola and powdered milk option is that you don't have to boil anything. Like yeah. it's just, a, it's a cold water meal. Yeah. And another, another thing that I have done recently too that Carrot also likes to make fun of me for is instead of powdered milk, I will use protein powder as the base. And honestly, it's pretty good. Like if you have a good protein powder, you're like, it's pretty tasty. Little granola, little protein powder in the morning. Getting all that swole on. Yeah, getting swole in the back country, yo. Lunch. Well, I- You never I feel bring like lunch. This is true. Yeah, sometimes I won't eat lunch. Like you just, like you kind of snack throughout the day, it's fine. Because snacks are more expensive than meals. And again, I'm true. trying to save money. Buy things in bulk, like a loaf of bread, and make sandwiches. And so you have sandwiches for lunch, and you're not eating four granola bars. Nothing quite like a bloody PB&J that are far more expensive than the sandwich. Mm -hmm. Backpacking like for work, I just like bring a package of tortillas with me and I do either cheese or tuna or chicken or whatever, just like the little foil packets and I'd like roll that up, eat that for lunch. You also got on a kick of doing hummus powder. Like yeah, just like dried, uh, dried hummus or dried black, hummus. or that black bean soup. There's like a dried black bean soup. And like, I wouldn't even make it a soup. I would just like make it just thick enough. I'd even put that on the tortillas. But yeah, that hum like the dried hummus, dried black bean stuff, that was good, yeah. Again, you're cutting out the expense of somebody else processing it for you. Yeah, I mean, making your own food, there's a lot of things that you can save money on by buying bulk. Trail mix is a classic one that people buy. Like you can make your own trail mix for cheaper than you buy the pre-mixed trail mix. Making your own jerky. You can go as far as the extreme Bo and Kirsten Beatty of making their own freeze-dried meals. Like we haven't done that, but. And we still occasionally buy like the high-end, like, you know, a cliff Bar or something. And like, it is nice to have that stuff too, but like yeah. you don't need it. Like it's not an absolute nece necessity, especially on short trips. No, and those things and like, are nice because they are non-perishable and so they can be in your backpack. Yeah. And if you don't eat it, it'll be their next weekend. Whereas a sandwich is not as great the next weekend. Yeah. There's other options that are cheaper than the high-end bars. Like a lot of times we'll get these big bars, super good. They're, you know, individually packaged. So you're paying extra for that, but they're still they're che they're cheaper than a lot of things. Yeah, and they're actual food though too, because yeah. it's like whole wheat and then there's actual fruit and there's fiber because there's figs and stuff. And so I feel like that's actually like more nourishing than like kind of a crappy granola bar or something like that. And then we'll make it up with 
eating legitimate candy. Candy, it's not there for nourishment. It's purely for morale boosting. It's for energy boost. If you're like having to like go up a hill or it's really hot or you're having to like hike really fast or something like that. Like it's literal pure sugar and it just brings so much joy yeah. that it's worth it. And but the other thing that I find with a lot of the things that we bring, especially on things that are packaged, is like we start bringing in so many sweet things because we have granola bars and candy and oatmeal and sandwiches and like all those things are sweet. And so I feel like oftentimes what we have a harder time finding are those savory, salty things. Yeah. And so I feel like we've spent quite a bit of time trying to find options that are gonna also meet that really satisfying salty fix. And so like getting in smokehouse oh, almonds, man. so much like, of it just highlights the extremes oh, that yeah. you want. Is like you want something really salty or you want something really sweet and it's like you don't want any of those bland things because you're expending energy and you're like sweating and you're mentally exhausted and you're just like, I really need to like hit that craving fix. <laughs> right. And so it is having like extreme things that are overly seasoned of overly sweet, overly salty, and they just like satisfy those needs. This is a glimpse into our psyche when it comes to backcountry food. Uh, I think the main takeaways are that you don't have to get super in depth in it, into it. You don't have to worry so much about stuff, especially on shorter trips. And like, yeah, you know, worry about it more if you're going for 10 days, for sure. But at least for us, a lot of times, short trips, it doesn't matter. I used to overthink it. You've definitely opened my eyes to not overthinking it. It doesn't have to be so complicated and you don't have to spend a ton of money. So anyway, uh, let us know if this was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, yeah. Let us know if you wanna see some more videos with Kara in it. Gotta get Kara on a hunt. I'm busy. She needs to film more hunts this year. <laughs>